So Glenn Beck is back to his old charlatan con man ways. He actually probably never stopped doing those things, but I just haven't been paying attention. Uh, he gave a speech at CPAC where he cranked up the dangerous hyperbole. You can tell by the people he surrounds himself with. Have you looked at that? The self-proclaimed communist, the founders and leaders of Antifa, Black Lives Matter, Occupy Wall Street, the new SDS, the modern versions of the Weather Underground terrorist organization are all on his campaign staff. These are not grassroot groups of Democrats. They are Marxist revolutionaries who believe in nothing short of the complete overthrow of the United States and destruction of the Constitution and the free market system. And please, let us stop calling them Bernie bros, because they are not my brother. They are not something that is funny. They are Bernie Bolsheviks. They are Bernie brown shirts. That's what they are. And their revolution will result in death and misery. Another Holodomor, or another Holocaust, or whatever we call the next great socialist atrocity. Idiotic fear mongers who have, there's not a single substantive critique that Glenn Beck has that he could make against Bernie Sanders and his movement. So he goes totally hyperbolic, he goes over the top, he goes obnoxious, and honestly, this convinces nobody. Don't take it from me, go listen to... Uh, the conservative, populist conservative host, Sagar, on uh, Rising on Hill TV, and he makes this case all the time. He's like, listen, if it's Bernie versus Trump, and the Trump people go all in on like, oh my God, communism, oh my God, what about like Venezuela, oh my God, they're kind of like Nazis. Like, you're going to get your clock cleaned, man. Because what he's doing is he, he's preaching inside his own little tight-knit circle, his own little bubble. And even many of the people in his own little bubble are going to go, mm, you're going a little too far there. But this appeals to nobody outside of that bubble. And everybody looks at it and says, really? The first, uh, per the person who might be the first Jewish president of the United States, really? He's going to do another Holocaust? He's like the Nazis? And I've pointed this out before, and it drives me crazy every time, but notice they always contradict themselves in their, when they're slinging mud and smearing Bernie and his movement. They're Marxists, they're communists, and they're kind of like Nazis. Okay, but wait, you do know the communists fought the Nazis, right? <laughs> you do know that there's a total contradiction in those, in those worldviews. You can't be both. It's not a thing. That's not a thing. That doesn't exist. That's like saying, I'm a Laker Nick. I'm both the Lakers and the Knicks. <laughs> what? <laughs> you gotta pick one. You can't have both. <laughs> it's just, he's, he's a moron. He doesn't know anything about political science. He doesn't know anything about the definitions. He doesn't know anything about what Bernie actually stands for, or, or he does, and he's just smearing him anyway. But go listen to any Bernie Sanders speech and then go listen to Glenn Beck's categorization of Bernie Sanders about how he's going to do another Holocaust and he's a Bolshevik and a brown shirt and his followers are terrorists and they're like Marxist, communist, whatever. Go compare the two. Because every Bernie speech is like, I want to give people health care and I want to give people education and I want to make sure everybody has a nice life and decent wages. And um, I also want to increase personal freedom, and I want to make sure that people can smoke marijuana and not go to prison as a result of it. And this idea that, like, they're, they're going to be violent and they're going to crack down on everybody who disagrees with them and maybe kill them. Bernie Sanders, uh, when there was a, a riot against Ann Coulter speaking at Berkeley, Bernie Sanders came out and said, no, we should let her speak. You want to know why? Because we believe in free speech in this country. We believe in free speech. So this guy who stood up for the rights of right-wingers to speak when it's unpopular, this is a guy who's going to kill people who don't agree with him? I'm sorry, man. It's just, like, it is embarrassing. Listening to Glenn Beck is embarrassing. And But just so you know, like, because a lot of centrists will hear this and say, this is why we can't run Bernie. He said the same thing about Obama. <laughs> Obama, who's a neoliberal corporate centrist. He was out there calling him a Marxist. He said, well, it's a government takeover of everything. Meanwhile, most of Obama's job growth was in the private sector as president. So there's never any connection to reality. If you're somebody who's listened to Glenn Beck, you have to understand, he has no idea what the hell he's talking about. It's all performance art. It's all over the top. It's all disconnected from reality and, and just trying to, you know, whip people up into a frenzy. But again, I don't think it'll work. 
Sager, the populist conservative, says this is not going to work because um, your attacks have to have a kernel of truth in them. And everything he's saying here, there's no kernel of truth at all. There's not a single person who's in Bernie's campaign, who's part of that movement, who believes in violence. They just don't. They believe in nonviolent, peaceful resistance. And they believe in trying to make us a thriving social democracy. He's an FDR-style New Deal Democrat. That's it. It's the continuation of a legacy that was so popular that he got elected four times, FDR did. And maybe that's why they're melting down. It's certainly possible that a guy like Glenn Beck knows that this can sell, and so he's immediately pressing the panic button and going over the top and going wild with it. But again, I don't think that this rhetoric really works, and I don't think that it, um, I don't think it expands the conservative circle. I think, if anything, it makes people go, what the hell is he talking about? And then they go take a look at why there's such vicious smears against the one candidate who really wants to help improve your life and improve the lives of all Americans.